Okay, so module 34, this is the Phillips curve. This is the next uh, really important graph that you need to know. Um, don't let the new graph confuse you. The concept of the Phillips curve is something we've been doing for weeks and weeks, and you're going to understand it. Um, we're just putting it to a graph, and that's all. Okay, it discusses the relationship between unemployment and inflation. So here you can see in the blue you have the unemployment rate and in red you have the inflation rate. And you can see when inflation, and it's not perfect, but as inflation is low, unemployment tends to be higher. And as unemployment falls, inflation tends to rise, right? Um, and we'll talk again more about this as we go through the PowerPoint here. So let's look at the short run Phillips curve. Uh, on one axis, you have inflation. On the um, vertical axis, you have the inflation rate. And on the horizontal you, axis, you have the unemployment rate. Um, this shouldn't be hard for you to remember because on our aggregate demand, aggregate supply graph, you have the price level on the vertical axis, which is basically the same as inflation. And then you have output on the horizontal axis, which again tells us about unemployment. So it's essentially the same labels and you have a downward sloping short run Phillips curve and so what does this tell us that there's an inverse relationship between inflation and unemployment okay when the economy is experiencing uh, high inflation when it's overheating unemployment is low and vice versa so here you can see inflation's at five percent but unemployment is down at two percent and then when we're in a recession, meaning high unemployment, we have very low inflation. And that is the gist of the short-run Phillips curve. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Um, when aggregate supply falls, right, uh, cost push inflation, something that causes stagflation, what happens in stagflation? We have higher prices and higher unemployment. What is that going to do to our Phillips curve? Well, that's going to shift our Phillips curve to the right because inflation is high at 5% and unemployment is high at 9%. And so our entire Phillips curve is going to shift when we have a shift in aggregate supply. Let's look at the long-run Phillips curve. Just like our long-run aggregate supply graph, the long-run Phillips curve is vertical at the natural rate of unemployment. And in the long run, we know there is no trade-off between inflation and unemployment. Just like we know on our aggregate demand, aggregate supply graph, in the long run, there is no trade-off between output and price level. Prices can rise but output is going to remain at its equilibrium level. Okay, and so as you see, the long-run Phillips curve is vertical at the natural rate of unemployment. Now, the reality of all of this is, in real life, the Phillips curve is not so um, neat. Okay, uh, the textbook says one thing, but when you plot out the data over time, it's not that straight kind of curve that we think about. So don't worry about that. Worry about the basics. And if one day you were to take some more macroeconomic classes, then you can get into the details. For now, just concern yourself with this basic relationship between inflation and unemployment. Okay, so now let's look at the Phillips curve and as it relates to aggregate demand and aggregate supply. Okay, so here we have on the left, we have our aggregate demand, aggregate supply graph, and on the right, we have our Phillips curve. Okay, so let's look at how these two interact with each other. All right, if we have a shift in aggregate demand, that is going to decrease unemployment and it's going to increase the price level. What does this do to our Phillips curve? Well, if unemployment decreases, it moves to the right, and if price level goes up, it moves to the left. Right, So a rightward shift of aggregate demand moves leftward along the Phillips curve. And let's look at what happens um, next. So we have our Phillips curve here. We're in a recessionary gap. 
right? We're operating below our full employment level. So we have high unemployment. What happens when aggregate demand falls even further? We're going to move rightward along our Phillips curve to a higher level of unemployment and a lower price level, right? One thing you should be noticing here, right? Look at the dots, the green dot and the black dot here, right? Green dot, black dot, green dot, black dot, right? They work as sort of a mirror image, all right? Let's look at it again. Here we have an economy in equilibrium. There's our long run and short run Phillips curve. We have stagflation. We have cost push inflation, a decrease in aggregate supply. What's happening? Unemployment is decreasing. Or sorry, unemployment is increasing and price level is increasing as well. This is going to shift our Phillips curve to the right. Once again, a movement up and to the left on our aggregate demand, aggregate supply graph will move in a mirror image up and to the right on our Phillips curve. The bottom line here, shifts of aggregate supply shift the Phillips curve. Shifts of aggregate demand move along the Phillips curve. Right, let's look at this again. Here we are, we have a recessionary gap. Let's look at what happens when we have an increase in aggregate supply. The short run Phillips curve is going to shift to the left, right? And we go uh, unemployment decreases and price level decreases as well. And so unemployment decreases and price level decreases. Once again, we work in a mirror image. Speaking of mirror images, let's take a look at this one more time. There's our Phillips curve, or sorry, yes, our short run aggregate supply, long run aggregate supply and demand graph, our Phillips curve, and you can see they are a mirror image of each other. Right? There we add in aggregate demand. We have our equilibrium level. We have an increase in aggregate demand. Unemployment decreases as output increases. Price level goes up. Well, this is what happens. Unemployment decreases, it moves to the left, price level goes up. You can see they are a mirror image of each other. Let's look at what happens when aggregate demand decreases. Unemployment increases, so we move to the right on our Phillips curve, and price level decreases, and price level decreases. Once again, movements of aggregate demand Shifting, move along the Phillips curve. And now more mirror image. We have our aggregate demand, aggregate supply graphs, economy in equilibrium. Aggregate supply decreases. We have cost push inflation. It creates stagflation, higher unemployment, higher price level. And our entire um, short run Phillips curve shifts to the right. Once again, mirror image. And we have an increase in aggregate supply, and our Phillips curve is going to shift to the left. Once again, mirror image of each other. And then finally, let's look at what happens here. Um, we're at equilibrium, an increase in aggregate demand. This moves us along the Phillips curve. What happens when uh, the economy goes like this, self-correction says workers negotiate for higher wages because unemployment is lower than the natural rate, they're able to get them. Short run aggregate supply is going to shift to the left. And so when aggregate supply shifts to the left, what happens? Our short run Phillips curve shifts to the right. And so you can see this little triangle from yellow to red to black goes from yellow to red to black. And again, hopefully you're seeing that these curves work in uh, a mirror image. And this is the Phillips curve.